Welcome to our 42nd episode of Black Dance Stories and the last for the month of May. Here's a note about why we are here. Our dance world was pummeled by COVID-19 and Black dance artists are finding ways to talk about life during this time. Our world was further turned upside down after horrible events ensued nationally and globally, bringing attention yet again to the need for the Black Lives Matter movement. Black dance artists have not been quiet. Black dance artists have been doing the work. Black dance artists continue to make work. To stay involved, we hold these weekly impromptu discussions and tell stories, Black dance stories. This is one action and we will stay involved. We are a community working together to support, uphold, highlight, and celebrate Black creatives. Tonight is our 42nd episode of what we hope will be many Black dance stories told in the artists' own voices. Tonight, it's Adia Tamar Whitaker and Nyjah Whitson's turn. Please meet some of our BDS family. I will go first. I am Charmaine Warren. I'm a light-skinned Jamaican. I am the great granddaughter of Ida Boyd, granddaughter of Solomon Golson and Ruby Chapman, and one of nine children by Theophilus and my 95-year-old mother, Perlene Warren, who lives in Jamaica. I am the aunt and grand aunt of 25 plus nieces and nephews at last count. I am a non-disabled black woman. Now and forever, I promise to acknowledge those who came before me and have toiled to make it possible for me to be present on this land. Today, I give homage to the native people by acknowledging that I live on the stolen land of the indigenous Lenape people now known as Montclair, New Jersey, with my husband, photographer and graphic artist, Tony Turner. Our daughter, Ashe Turner, a black ballerina with locks is in her junior year at Boston Conservatory. I have locks that are braided and pulled up in a bun and one hanging. I'm wearing a light blue t-shirt and large colorful wooden earrings. Behind me are photos of our family, a large plant, a lamp, and African masks. Happy Black Dance Story Thursdays, BDS family. It is so satisfying to know that you all are out there. We see you and we love you. I turn it over to Kimani. Thank you, Charmaine. And you know, in the words of Gloria Grimes, it will be a delicious, delightful dancing night. The importance of acknowledging our familial and dance legacies is an essential tradition. And in keeping with the tradition, I recognize my indigenous brothers and sisters as a first step in moving toward action. With profound respect, I honor and acknowledge the Lenape, whose stolen land I am zooming from, currently known as the village of Harlem. I am a black non-disabled woman and I live with my 10 year old son. I am sitting in my dining room surrounded by white walls. I have golden hair with close natural curls. I am wearing a gray sleeveless shirt with turquoise wooden Afro pick earrings. I am the granddaughter of Lucille and Melvin Madison. And on my paternal side, Gwendolyn I. Allen and Simeon Fowlin. I am the daughter of Ronald Augustus Fowlin, Jamaican warrior and gourmet chef, and Anne Fowlin, rebel and Renaissance woman. I dance because of them. My son Tamayo, visual artist and poet, keeps me present as I witness his growing beautiful boy. I am in awe of his amazing talents and his blossoming spirit. And with that, I turn it over to Makada. Thank you, Kimani. Hi, hi, everyone. My name is Makada Lily and Wabunkozi Margiros Roni. I am in this human experience as an able-bodied Black Indigenous American woman. Pronouns she, her, and they, an acknowledgement of my ancestors and my spirit team that is all around me and that is also me. I come from a long generational line of artists 
and energetic intuitives, both on my maternal and paternal line, the love Roni lines, which extend out through so many amazing, powerful people, names and ancestors that I call on and send my love to and gratitude to every day, even by just being here. I am the daughter of Mia Love and Antoine Roney, sister of Kojo Roney, Sephora Roney, and Tapazi Love, all beautiful, powerful artists. I'm also an aunt of two beautiful nieces and a beautiful nephew. Um, I live, I am live from Harlem, which is, was respectfully and harmoniously occupied by the unseated Lenape. I am a life, body, soul, alchemist in which I turn ethereal matter into what we call dance, movement, art, poetry, and whatever else my soul is called to channel and express love, light, and truth. I'm sitting in my loft bedroom on a love seat. Behind me are abundance of plants and a bookshelf and a white wall. I am wearing a tank brown t-shirt dress with some flowers on it. I have a golden Hamza necklace. My hair is in natural curls to my shoulders and I have golden hoops. So community is such a big part of black dance stories. And we know this, we know this, we wanna know who's watching tonight. Please like this video, drop some comments in the chat, say hello where you're watching from, feel free to engage ask questions, share some love, please ask questions. <laughs> also, um, please follow us on our social media. Our Instagram is at Black Dance Stories. Our Twitter is at BLK Dance Stories. Both of our Twitter and Instagram links are in the chat, as well as the description of this video. And most importantly, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. We have a huge goal of making it to a thousand subscribers and we can't do it without your help. We're almost there and we're like, we're like reaching, reaching up there, but we need just like that flood in. <laughs> so please subscribe, follow us and share with your community. Um, we have a subscriber Sunday. So look out for that on our social media and our newsletter if you're on that a day where we will be illuminating our amazing community and encouraging more people to be a part of this beautiful growing community. All of these links and information are in the description box of this video. So you can go ahead and check that out. And we just always thank everyone for your continual love and support. Um, so without further ado, everyone grab yourself some wine, water, tea, your cup of happy, and let's cheers to Black Dance Stories. Cheers. And I pass it to Kimani. Thank you. So <laughs> just quickly, I wanna say, please everyone consider donating. We need your support. We wanna keep it going until we're back in the theaters live and that's coming soon. So please donate, donate. And just to keep us vigilant always, okay? that once again, our BDS team will continue to stand in solidarity with our sisters and brothers all over the world, with all those who want an immediate end to racial violence and systemic racism, please be active, don't stay silent. With that, I will turn it over to Charmaine. Mm, thank you, Kimani. It's such a family affair as we were all talking about systemic racism mm -hmm. and it touches all of our lives, y'all answer the call stay with us and we'll stay with you we promise all right kimani and market are gonna leave for just a minute and we are so happy to see y'all again and again and again and again and again and then now it's time to bring in adia what adia tamar whitaker come on in adia Hello, good evening. Uh, what about me? Can you say <laughs> cheers? Uh, cheers, Mama Charmaine. Thank you, darling. Good evening. Mm. 
Okay, so now you can introduce yourself to, to the rest of the world that's here. Okay, lots of new things for me. Okay, my name is Adia Tamar Whitaker. I am a light-skinned, non-disabled black woman with short hair and glasses sitting in a yellow room. I'm wearing a gray shirt with blue uh, patterns on it. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am in Crown Heights in Brooklyn, New York, the stolen land of the Munse Lenape people. The Munse Lenape people are the wolf clan of the Lenape nation. In gratitude and on behalf of my ancestors, I pay homage to the original inhabitants of this land. May their legacies, families, traditions, and culture remain uplifted and protected by action that reaches beyond land acknowledgments into change that will fortify future generations of the Muncie Lenape Nation. I am the daughter of Bobby Jean Washington and Willie Roscoe Whitaker. I am the granddaughter of Dorothy Mae Washington, W.M., Ernestine P., and Reverend C.J. Whitaker. I am the great granddaughter of Mose P., Nancy Ford, little sister, Albert Williams Blonde, James Kinley, Richard Mann Whitaker, and Priscilla Harrison. I am the great, great granddaughter of Perlina Cheeseboro, Black Hat, Lucille Kinley, Amelia Rutherford, Willie Michael, Mary Jones, John Williams, Isabel Edwards, Isaac Ford, Millie Johnson, Gayton P., Francis, Francis Harrison, Henry Harrison, Rebecca Whitaker, and Thomas Samuel Whitaker, Jr. I am the great, great, great granddaughter of Mona Creek, Thomas Samuel Whitaker, Sr., Robert Johnson, Mary Ann Cox, Mary Williams, Vandy Williams, Anna Zeigler, DVO, Sue Allen, Orange Rutherford, Christopher Washington, Amy, and James Cheeseboro. I am the great, great, great granddaughter of Catherine, Nancy Rutherford, Emma Zeigler, Fred Michael, and Monk Mitchell. I am the great, 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 great granddaughter of Richard Whitaker, Arnold Mitchell, Green Michael, Eliza Robertson, Thomas Brady, and Mary Huggins. I am the great, 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 great granddaughter of Edward Brady, Rachel Whitford, and Benjamin Whitaker. I am the great, 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 great granddaughter of William Brady, Mary McRae, and many, many more that I do not know. I am also a descendant of the Takar people of Cameroon and the Bubi people of Equatorial Guinea's Bioko Island, the wife of Benjamin Rojas, the mother of Yashche and Bali, the mother of Olayika Zumbi, a community leader, dancer, choreographer, vocalist, songwriter, costume designer, the founder, an artistic director of an almost 21-year-old Brooklyn-based performance ensemble and nation that has a sister pop-up company in California called Ashe Dance Theater Collective. That's all. <laughs> what do you mean that's all? That's a that's lot. All. <laughs> that was a lot. Adia, for for real, say. did you always know all of your heritage? Did you were you able to go back that far from a long time ago? I have some, I have my family, that kind of family, like my fam, my, my grandfather founded one of the first black, like democratic parties in South Carolina. So they are like them type of people. So one of my aunts like knew, you know, on my grand, on the Whitakers, the Whitakers did all that. And I was like, well, I'm gonna do the other part with some ancestry, African ancestry, and then ask over on my mama's side. So I was able to put some puzzle pieces together, but they were already, my family was already into it from a long time ago. My Aunt Drew. Your Aunt Drew, you said? Yeah, my Aunt Drew. And, her, and tell us about Aunt Drew. Aunt Drew was born during Hurricane Donna and her birthday is 9-11. My daughter was born during Occupy Wall Street. Her birthday is 9-11-11. So my Aunt Drew's name is Donna Whitaker, and then she married my uncle, I think it's Rogers, right? But then she, we call her Aunt Drew because my grandma's sister was Druetta, and then she, they call her after my grandma's sister, Aunt Druetta, and then she became Drew. They just call her Druetta too. I don't know if they look, they didn't really look alike, but. 
And to, that's how they wait, did so it. your daughter that's born on 9-11, does she know that she has an Aunt Drew that's on the, born on the same date? I think so. I think she heard of her, but she doesn't really like know it like that. Yeah. No, she doesn't know. She doesn't know what 9-11 is to the United States of America. She's like, why is everybody on my birthday? Like, she don't get it. She's just, she was just born that day. It was a regular day for her. It was like the day she came to the earth. Do we, yeah. do we want to go from family to dance or stay with family? Whatever, you, whatever, like whatever. It's all, it's all a part of the same thing. I think, like okay. All, okay, so let's stay with family and how family took you to dance. Okay, so family took me to dance. I was born in Chicago. My dad was in the military. I was born in Chicago. And then when I was really little, we moved to Germany. And then when I was about four, we moved to Texas. So I was never in a place where I could like stay for long. So the dance I was exposed to was mostly ballet, tap and modern. Anything you could do like at a mall, like a strip mall type dance situation. That's what I was in when I was little, right? So then when I was seven, I moved to San Francisco and that's the place that I had, I lived for longest before I came to New York. So I've been in New York for 21 years. I lived in San Francisco for 24 years. Like that's why San Francisco got to be my home because it was the place I stayed the longest. And so in San Francisco, um, so where I was always a dancer, I always wanted, I was always into dance. In San Francisco, when I got to college, it wasn't until my first semester in college, I had to take a PE requirement and that's when I worked, walked into an Afro-Haitian Dunham Technique class and danced to my first drum. Like that's the first time I did any kind of dance besides hip hop. Like I was way into hip hop. I was like, I think I was even a rapper at a point. Like I was way into hip hop. So anything that was, this was the, old, the first time I had been exposed to like African dance and drum culture. And it completely shifted my entire life. Like I would not be here sitting with you had I not walked into that classroom? You know, people say I was always a dancer. What does that mean yeah. for you? Because I think I was always a dancer too. Yeah. It was, it, I, I, the thing I remember is like, you know how you good at some things at certain times in your life. This was the thing that I always like, oh, I know I can do this. Like when I was three, like when I was like, oh, the beat drop, hey, like I always knew I was like, oh, I could do this. And there was never a point in my life where I questioned if I could do it. Now, when you get older and people start chiming in your ears about what dance is and what a real dancer is and you, you know, all this thing that happens later. But I never really it was always something where I'm like, oh, this is where this is like my true self. Like this is who I really am, you know, so I. Yeah, that's what I meant by always dancing. Like I always knew when the beat dropped, I always knew, well, okay, let's go. Like I was never like, oh no, I'm shy. I was never shy about it. But you didn't I was never follow scared about it. You didn't follow the modern dance ballet route. I mean, I did because I I had the body type. And I like I was I was actually pretty good at ballet. Like I like ballet. Like I'll take a ballet class and I'll feel good. Now, when all the like psychology came in and all that other stuff, that's when it got crazy. And I had to like, okay, I must see y'all. But before that, I was like super into ballet. But you know, racism, you know, all the things it starts to creep in. And you're like, man, I was having so much fun till I realized what was going on. You know, you know, I can't just let that pass like that. You know, all the things that creep in, racism. What? You know, like, it, you know, I, it, it just, people, I just, I, I was around older women. Like to me, it was always like the older women was what you were trying to be. It wasn't like you were trying to have this career where you just like go up and then you crash because you're too old to dance. Like that just didn't make sense because in the Bay area, that's not how we're taught. That's not how we're raised in our dance families. It's like the old, the aunties are the ones you're trying to be like. It's not the other way around. Like the aunties aren't trying to be young. They, they come in and you know, you're trying to be like them. So when I came to New York, you know, I came here to attend the Ailey school. And when I went at the Ailey school, I remember we had this one, somebody came and talked to us one time and they were like, if you haven't made it into a professional company by the age of 24, you might want to consider uh, going into a different part of the dance world. And I was like, 
24, what do you know at 24? What are you dancing about at 24? Like, what is you really smacking down on the dance floor about at 24? And like, there's one thing that's like the virtuosity, right? But then there's the other thing, like, I don't always wanna see dance about dance. I want to, if, I, if it's dance about dance, then like stunning, like visual aesthetics, but like, I wanted to dance with people that were dancing about life and that were living life and the life was, coming through in the dance. I didn't, I wasn't into like hiding the thing to present the, the illusion of this kind of, you know, machine dancer, if you will. I was like, I want people that are like, have scars on their body. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they don't have a, like a, you know, something. Like I just need somebody that's like been, you know, through some things, hiked up a mountain, like knows how to like, stink for like a couple days, you know, build a fire. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted people that were like living life and not just doing dance about dance. So that's so what I mean. So was that an I auntie was, for was, you? What, what, what do you mean? What so did an auntie? auntie do that for you? You said that's what you wanted. Someone who had scars on their body. Living no, life. the aunties were just so amazing. Like the aunties would come and they would just like smack up the dance floor and walk away and you'd be like, wait, can I? can I, I want to do that. Like, like she, like that lady, I want to do it like that Miss Mama session. I want to be like that. You know what I'm saying? And so when I came to New York and it was like, no, you must be, and you have dance is this thing and you need to be this way to do this kind of dance in the contemporary scene. It was very confusing to me because I was like, but the reason why we came to New York is to get better at whatever each of us does, right? Training should make you better at what it is, the style that you really can smack at, right? But it didn't seem like that was the case. Or I just didn't have the mind to understand it like that. I didn't have people that were like helping me to understand it in that way. So I just was like, oh my God, I'm not really a contemporary dancer because I'm not this and that. And I haven't gotten in this and that. But I was like, now at the point, I'm like, say something to me. Say something to me. Say something to me. If I get out there and do a two step, I'm a real dancer. Boom. Boom. So, but we, you know. we need to know because I'm sure there are some aunties that pulled you into this direction that you're going in, that you're in right now. Oh my God, there's so many. Do you want do you want the list of aunties? I have the list now. You want the list of aunties? Okay. So first it was Dr. Alberta Rose. So she, I walked into her class at San Francisco State University. In the class was Layla Jenkins. Layla Jenkins is just, just amazing. There was also Malia Connor. So they were like, they were still young bucks to those aunties, but I was like a super young buck. Like I was 18, you know, they were probably like 20 something, but they were the dancers that were training me. Um, and then my teacher, may she rest in peace, uh, Miss Alicia Pierce. She like, you know, these were my like Dunham Technique mothers. And then after I got to them, um, I was more, curious about like the folklore and the actual, the dance and cultural context, because I was like, I need to know what this is. Like, I need to know what y'all really doing. So I ended up going to Haiti and then I went to Cuba two times because I was like, I need to go back again and see what y'all doing. And so from Cuba, I think I went back to San Francisco for maybe two days. I packed up my whole life and I moved to New York. So I was like fresh from Cuba on my first day at the Alvin Ailey School at 24 years old in the year 2000 on September 1st. So, and you know, I'm coming from the folklore world. So I don't have all this like contemporary dance etiquette. Like my, I had locks, my locks was sticking out. I didn't twist them down. You know what I'm saying? Things was, uh, you know, I wasn't, you know, I was in the back, like listening to dance hall music, eating like some food, Mrs. Jameson came in. I was like, oh, you know, I just didn't, I was, I didn't have like the etiquette and the fear. Like I didn't have the, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I was like, hey, cause I got, I had just got done with college and I just came from Cuba. So I had already traveled and been in like, you know, frocks on frocks on frocks and head wraps and ceremonies. And I was coming from all the, <laughs> and then I came to like the Ailey school, like shut that down, you know? So it was very much a shock. <laughs> And I, and I just felt I had imposter syndrome. I was like, wait a minute, am I supposed to be here? Maybe I shouldn't be here. Oh no, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. Blah, blah, blah. But I was supposed to be there. You know, I just, it was such a different. And you know, in the, in the West Coast, 
we don't have all these uh, gradations in the diaspora. Like the first time I heard somebody speak like Patois or Creole, I had only seen that on TV. I had never, I'd never seen the leaves change in real life in California because we kind of have one season. Like there were certain things I came, I never lived in snow. So I was just like, what is this world, right? So I, it was, you know, it was a whole shift for me moving to New York, you know? And it'll really like squeeze the struggle and diamonds and pearls out of your soul. So, you know, I'm grateful for that, but it, it also, you know, it's been a long ride. It's been 21 years of me trying to figure, figure all of this out, you know? Adia, are you an auntie There's now? more aunties. I'm so, I am an auntie. I believe I am an auntie. I mean, I'm like, I'm like a low level auntie. I'm like a pledge auntie. I'm not like a high level auntie. I'm like a pledge auntie. But I definitely like have some like people that I'm raising, you know, outside of my house. And, you know, I, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm moving into the auntie, but I'm not like an out to pasture auntie. No. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like, what does that, that mean? oh. Like, I'm not like, oh, she, oh, look at, oh, I'm not that kind of auntie. Like, oh, you remember, oh, I'm not that kind of auntie. I don't think, maybe people feel like that about me. I think people, some people do. I don't feel like that. Like, I don't feel like, oh, oh, like, oh, she used to be a dancer. Oh, I don't feel like that. <laughs> I tried not to crack up, but so what? You can crack me. up. Tell me, crack up so they don't hear me. I want them to hear you. But what kind of auntie are you? For example. I mean, my name, Adia means gift. And I have the problem that many Black women have, like giving away, giving away till I have nothing. So, I mean, I feel like it's significant that I've been able to create dance jobs for many I, at this point, over a hundred black dancers over the course of me being in, in here and uh, on both coasts. So I feel like I'm definitely somebody that creates revenue for people. I also, I feel like I'm a passer on of stories and traditions that people take with them into their life. Um, you know, I can, I, I, I look out for my people. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. I don't know what kind of auntie I am. I, I, I think I'm figuring it out. Because like I said, I'm low level. I'm like G5G. That's what I want to be. Like I'm half pint auntie still. But before, before your time is up, I think you should tell them about Ashe Dance Theater Collective. Because I think that's at least one prong of your auntieism, right? Right. Um, Ashe Dance Theater Collective. Woo! Okay, so Ashe Dance Theater Collective is I am the worker. I am the worker for Ashe Dance Theater Collective, which is a, it's an energy that exists outside of me, but I'm like the person that gets possessed with the dance and then gives it to the community to, to disseminate, right? And so it has been like the greatest blessing of my life. It really is a great migration story. You know, at the time of the great migration, black folks were just coming up to these cities and we were just all leaving our families, trying to live these dreams, trying to create opportunities for ourselves and our family. And I, I think we just continue that tradition. I feel like Ashe Dance Theater Collective continued that tradition. Um, and I mean, we perform dancing music from the African diaspora. We, I mean, the thing I've coined this as is neo folklorist because there wasn't really like a group of young black folks that were really doing like the research and coming behind us to learn. So I was trying to figure out ways to like make folklore more sexy for younger folks so that they would get hyped off and they'd be like, oh yeah, I want to do that, you know? Um, and so, I, I, you know, Ashe went from like a performance ensemble that was very like dancey dance and hey, we're, we were students at the Ailey School to like, okay, now we got to write songs that help us tell our stories to like, oh, now we got to act. And then it just turned into this nation and network of Black folks really helping each other to stay alive. I mean, we, we was, there's 13 children between all of us that we, we had our children at the same time, you know, all the things, life, death 
breakups, makeups, all the things. And I, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Like that's my family, you know? And it gets hard like families do. Like sometimes y'all don't want to see each other. You get on each other's nerves. You're like, ooh, I can't talk to you right now. Cause you know, oh, I need a break, you know? But, but I, I am all, everybody always comes back. And even the ones that don't, they still have had such, they've made such a mark on the work in me. And I feel like it's been the same that it's okay. Like, All right, so I would love to ask you, put you on the spot, but it's time. But I think I'm gonna put you, make you think about it. Who are the original company members? <laughs> you want me to say the list? Which which generation? There's like six generations. First, like first, the first. OGs. First from the, like the Ailey school. First, first. Oh wait, you had an Ailey school. Ashe? Yeah, we we started in 2000. When I got here in September, our first show was in December. Of course, because your name is Adia Whitaker. Yeah. All right, then maybe think about it when you come back, because it's time. It's time already. How quickly did that okay. go? All right, Nija, come on in. And y'all, there are lots of friends out here. Lots of friends. Hi, Nija. Hello. Oh, hold on, there's lots of people out here. Okay, so Kayla Dodler. Tian Tin Lee, right? Rianne Granados, Morgan Connor, Jacob Panante, Kenneth Prado, Amy Casello, Elizabeth Zimmer, Ann Davidson, Vincent Thomas, Bruce Rodriguez, Maxine Montalas, Eva Ya Asante Wa, Kyle Marshall, Coco Killingsworth. Y'all, your friends, where did Adia go? Adia, come back. Don't turn off your camera. Uh, I, I thought I was following directions. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nija, I was trying help to me do. out. Help me I'm out, sorry. Nija. Ain't no wrangling, Adia. Don't, I can't help you. <laughs> <We're> not, mm -mm. <laughs> well, welcome, Nija. <laughs> now I get to leave y'all to have a little bit more fun. Don't have too much fun without me. But this is for you all. I'll see you in a little bit. All right. See, I wasn't following. I didn't know. <laughs> That's okay. Because the direction. Hey, Nigel. Ma'am, how are you? I'm all right. You know, I'm out here. I'm out here. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm amazed by the beautiful speaking of your people. You calling forth and calling, I mean, I'm familiar with your work, so I know you're calling them all the way in as an artist, but it yeah. was so incredible to hear you speaking their names. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so many, you know, and they're all in there. Like whether I don't want, whether I want them to be or not, they're all like, so I'm like, all right, y'all, party in the head, party in the head. And how are you? I was saying, so y'all like Nija, me, where, where did we meet that one time though? Because I met you, I like, you was like, was it the Urban Bush women thing? Maybe? That, the Korean yeah. of a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. God. Okay. So that was a long time. We met and I, she like so kind, like, oh, I did, did, did. And I was like, okay. And then I feel like Nija was just like, I saw Nija everywhere. Like I've just been seeing Nigel everywhere. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I met this person like at the at the beginning, but maybe it wasn't the beginning and I didn't know. Cause I had, you know, I was pregnant for a long time. <laughs> That's when you die, die in the dance world. You die when you get pregnant. Cause what are you doing? That was it. I remember also though, that you were saying a lot on the socials about needing to like have space and pause that, you know, all yeah. kinds of course have been happening to to us for 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 years and in between that time that we met each other but a big part um the lesson that i've been picking up of listening to you over that time was just like i i don't got it for y'all like you were just taking space so yes bringing children into the world but i think well from what i remember that you have also been like i'm, I'm going to take a moment because I need to, I need to repair. I need to central centralize my, my work and to not be out here just producing or I don't know, running on a you get You could get caught up. Right. You get so caught up. 
because people want their products, you know? They want their products. And at that time, it was like, I had made so much work. You see what I'm saying? One of my works right here. I made so much work. I had made so much work that I was like, I don't think I need to keep making. And I was, I couldn't, I don't, I still don't understand how you like calm down that crackish behavior that happens with us as choreographers when we get like, we get the fellowship, we get the grant, and then we just get on this cycle of like, make, 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 make. But then, you know, if you're, if you're working from a place that's ancestral or you're working from a place where the information is the cycle, that's not the cycle of how you create, but you have to create because we're in this system. The work gets all crazy. It gets all, everything starts to get messed up and then it ends up hurting you. Like you're the one that ends up being unhealthy, losing your voice getting sick because you've been in it. The, it's just, you know, and part of it is like, yes, let's, let's do it for, <laughs> let's do it for the, you know, let's, you know, do the show. But also like, I just don't think it has to be such an ab abusive and unhealthy. Like I just needed to find a way because it was going to kill me. Like my art was literally, I would just make, 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 not sleep, not sleep, make, 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 not sleep, not sleep, take this gig. Like kind of how it is right now with all this like acceleration of the technology, That's right? Great. Yeah, no. I've been a lot recently around that, that we have to be careful of any kind of mission out there that wants us to be erased. And I feel like, you know, technology has a, a possibility of really like uh, amplifying us in a way, right? But this idea that we can somehow shift ourselves to a digital reality where our bodies are no longer important like we need to check into that. What is that's you know that's a that's a white supremacist erasure project one oh one. Right. Try to remove right. That, capitalize off right. of that. Nah. Right. Nah. And and I feel like we just black people really need to concentrate on health right now because it's like it's just gonna like our minds, our mental health as like as we engage with this technology, as we disconnect from this technology, I think that our mental health, we have got to focus on these things because we could just fall, especially for people that are sensitive people of the earth and you feel all the things, you feel all the things, you know, you got to be real. I have to be real careful right now. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think it's about me just making, making, making till my head, you know, pops off my body because I can't. You, you got to stop. You got to go back to the nature and like just be in the nature, not just to go take from the nature. So it'll give you something so you can make so, so a dance about it. You know what I'm saying? You got to just go to the nature and fortify you as a, as, as a receptacle of all that information, because it's just going to get jumbled. And then the transmission is going to be jumbled. But if you go and you just, you know, bathe in that and get the medicine from the earth to then heal yourself up, without the intention of taking to make, right? Just just going and healing that up, then the making is just gonna happen. But you know, it's that's a learned practice, right? That's a learned, you have to learn how to take care of yourself in that way, especially when you are part of an ensemble or you're a part of any kind of community too. Right. And to even recognize that as a practice and not a thing that is like that you're entitled to but that it's a, it's about you know a, you know a kind of vacation format where we you can go to places and just extract from those places, but as opposed to what you're saying of just going going and being with land and going and being with nature, as opposed to like let me let me go and get you know let me go and receive from that place. That right. as a practice transforms that thing. It's it's been it's been instrumental for me to also find that space of like, it's not just about the relationship between nature and spirit as kind of ritual practice that somehow is outside of our, our day-to-day -day being, but that we are we are fortified all of the time by our relationships to, to nature. Right. And I'm not good at it. Like I haven't mastered anything. Like I'm out here looking crazy, walking around at night, talking about costumes and this, I'm still, I, I'm trying to do better, but it's very, it's very, it's very hard, you know, mm -hmm. it's very hard because I, you know, making up dances and dancing with your friends is fun. So we're in the middle of a Polaroid. Uh, so 
anything at this time is hard. I don't ima- I, I can't imagine. Yeah. I feel like this the thing that I'm always trying to remind myself of, especially as things are opening and there's this like energy and urgency around like what's the next gig, what's the next show, like now that, you know, let's get people in the room. I'm like, it is still a panorama. It's here, it's still happening. <laughs> Right. It's a panorama. That's right. It is a panorama. Pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know what this get back, what the get back, what's the get back? Because, yeah. you know, like it's just like capitalism is just bully moving it. It's like, boom, everybody has to get back. And like, yeah, don't nobody want to wear a mask. Like wearing a mask isn't fun, but like everybody wears a mask anyway. You could just see it now. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a survival masquerade and a and their true self anyway. You could just see it now. So now you take the mask off. You're not even tr- processing that you are wearing. Lots of people are wearing masks when people been wearing masks for so long to survive in this culture. So I think that part of trauma is forgetting, right? you go through a trauma and then you like black out. You don't remember what happened for a second. And you got to kind of like go through that part of it. But then after you forget, it starts to fly back at you in little chunks and pieces. It's like, what are you going to do with the pieces of your memory that are now flying back at you? Like, what are you going to do as that starts to slowly, slowly creep in back? Are you just going to be like, no, no. Or are you going to, you know, Mm-hmm. Get some medicine for it. Get some therapy, you know? Hear that. What's inspiring you these days? Uh, you know, like dead people always been real close to me. And there's lots right now. And they're just not far. They're not far. They used to be farther away. And they're just not far right now. So I think it's more of like, I have to get my space self into spaces where I can listen so I can follow directions. Mm. So, so that's, that's, that's what's happening right now. Now it's like, I got to follow it. Like now it's like, a, it's not no like, Oh, thing that it's no pretend for me. It's like, I have to make sure I'm in situations where I can listen so I can follow directions. Mm-hmm. So I can go to sleep at night. <laughs> I hear that in such a deep way. Oh my God. Yep. Yep. Or they take you in the middle of the day. <laughs> Supposed to be doing something totally different. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm back and I'm interrupting. You right on time. It's okay. okay. All right. <laughs> See you in a minute, Adia. Don't okay. go too far. Peace, yeah. Peace. Okay. Hey, Naja. Hello, Mama Charmaine. Cheers. Cheers, fam. Cheers. Boop. Boop. Mm. A, a something percent something in it. So, <laughs> something, <know>. something. <laughs> something, something. It's got some percent of, of something that feels a little fizzy in it. So we go. Ah. I have one of the mothers and I'm supposed to be making another kombucha. It's a lot of work. I'm just saying. It is. And you can't, when you start making kombucha, you just have to be in community because every time you make one batch, you end up with like two mothers. So if you are in the practice of sharing it, you, your refrigerator will be overtaken. <laughs> Wait, so you make kombucha also? I used to. I haven't because I was I was moving too much for it, but I was also like, oh, I need to set up a network. I can't just be making this for myself. You need to have people on deck who are ready to take kombucha from you or otherwise you waste the the mother. Uh, taking notes. Can't do that. Taking notes right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't even it, introduce yourself. <laughs> we, we're going there. See, remember what you asked? Is this just going to be a, a kiki? Yes. But yeah. introduce yourself, please. Yeah, I'm going to write me a note to come back to the computer. All right, so let me get my paper. Um, today, I'm Zooming from unceded Tongva land, colonially known as Los Angeles. Each day is a sacred walk to acknowledge the blood and spirit in the soil wherever I'm found. And I sit in gratitude for what this space gifts, demands, and for what it has called me to be responsible. I'm the child of 
my ancestor mother, Vanetta Dorothea Warner, and Benny Raymond Theodore Alexander Whitson II. I'm the child of the McDaniels, the Nettises, the Warners, the Whitsons of Texas, Kansas, Ohio, Alabama, Sierra Leone, and Nigeria. Black Indians, root workers, steel workers, and dreamers. I'm the Ankti, my niece spells it A U N C T I E, of Laniqua, Jasmine, Torre, Tara, TJ, and great Ankti of TJ, Hamilton, Chadwick, Lexi, Mikey, Abrea, Zay, Jordan, MJ. I'm a cousin and a great cousin and a great great cousin. I'm a I'm thinking of my, my aunts and my uncles, of which there are many. My name is Nyjah Woodson. Nyjah means one who is coming. I'm a chocolate skinned, melanin blessed, non-binary transgender person. My locks make roads down my head, shoulders, chest, and back. My hands are adorned by silver and tell the story of collard greens, great migrations. Sierra Leone and Nigeria. I stomp with a cane, a shiny brown third, third leg with gold accent on its handle. I'm wearing a large green fedora. You may call me by my name when you refer to me or they them if you must. My pronouns like my name call forth the many and the much that I am and my people are. For the people in the back, my name is pronounced Nija. The soft J follows a hard blade, also known as an apostrophe. I make art. Thank you. <laughs> that was still taking notes. Oh, please. Nija. <laughs> you miss New York. Come on, tell the truth. Of course I do. This pandemic ain't right for so for so many reasons, but one of them being that I've not been able to to be there for for a very long time. So yeah, um, I miss it. I miss it. My my family, like the people who are my like my art family, my my chosen ones. Many of them are in New York. So yeah, to not be there is it's hard. And we hate this Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the way you're communicating, right? With your people. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm. I don't mind it. It's okay. I'm learning um, as much as I'm needing to like take steps away from it because it's it has a, you know, whatever that kind of like it's pulling extracting energy. So I it's nice to also move away from it. But to be able to be connected with folks and see your beautiful faces, <laughs> it's like it's, it's a rescue. It's such a rescue. Yeah, but I, I miss I miss y'all. But I'll be back soon. <laughs> and I want to talk about being back soon, but I want to also talk about taking care as we were talking about, because, you know, someone hit me to one of the exhausting things about Zoom is there's no pause. You're not traveling from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should... We were talking about care, but you talk about yours. Maybe I'll talk about mine, but you talk about yours. I care. Oh, well, one yeah. of the for sure is I was I've started to be like, all right. So if I were in New York and this and I had that only that capacity, right? You got to get on a train between a meeting. You got to maybe get on a bus. You taking a cab or something that reduces the amount of time you have to actually be in meetings all day. So this idea of like, I can do six or seven meetings is unheard. We don't do that, right? That typically, and there's there's some, some protection built in. So this idea that we can just sit and back to back, talk to people or sit in front of a screen and be productive and like have, have our words and self together, no matter how much, you know, if you don't got pants on below, <laughs> right are you bringing your meal to the zoom <laughs> you still have to like sit and do a thing and perform a thing um so i've been trying to um let me not say i've been trying to because i've been doing um limiting the number of meetings that i have right like i just if i can't do that in the live 
there's something around that to pay attention to. It doesn't necessarily mean I have suddenly more capacity because it's a computer. So I, I'm like, all right, that those days of like, I was in six meetings, I, I've done that only a few times, but recognize at the end of them that I was, I was done in a way that was really, really unhealthy versus like, oh, I've completed my day. I felt like I have nothing like completely pulled from. So I, that I'm like, no, never again. People will have to wait. We don't suddenly have more hours in a day or more days in a week. Nope, my capacity is no longer, it's not the same, right? It's, it's not the same because we're also, as we, Adia and I were just talking about, we're in a panorama. That's so, I have less capacity. Um, so recognizing that is a part of self-care for me. Um, I'm right now super close to the water. So anytime I can get to the ocean from where I am right now, from door, door to shore is two miles. So I, I try as often as I can when I'm here to go and just hear the water, smell, smell the salt in the air. Um, there's a, a canyon that I can hike in. It's harder for me now. I just had some, some a medical procedure, so it's hard for me to, to walk right now. But before that, I was in a practice of that's just like having these extended walks, right? So I'm getting back to that. Um, you know, the other day I was, I walked for like two hours just to like be outside to again, like just hear, hear what's happening outside, hear nature, um, allow myself to be, to be a visitor and be visited by, um, that has not as much as possible to, you know, not have my phone guiding me or telling me what to do or pinging me that I need to do a thing, but like getting myself up early enough that I can get lost outside and not worry about like rushing in for the meeting or rushing in for the next thing. Um, so yeah, self-care has, especially during this time has been being outside as much as possible. However, I can like just drink in outside air, of course, masked up, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of but, course, masked up. Yeah. Do you mm, talk to the water? That's the thing that's not in New York. That that not really in New York. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Oh my God! Um, all the time. I'm definitely one of those people that, like, you know, they they get the side eye. I think folks know when <laughs> when like this. <laughs> you get side eye. <laughs> For sure, <laughs> for sure, because I will go in, and if I haven't gotten up, I try to do it early in the day so I'm unbothered by people, but if it's a time where there's folks around, there's definitely, you know, a little bit of that, like, you know, folks are afraid of whatever they perceive as witchery, not, not all folks, but some folks, right, so yes, there can be, there's some side eye, I've learned to ignore people, and I go talk. And also I'm not paying attention to them. So I go talk. I give the water offerings every time because you know you don't just go and take, but like, and sometimes it's just about just being present, you know, prayers of gratitude as opposed to requests. Um, but yeah, I go chat, I go laugh. I'm learning to swim because child, you know, I grew up in Ohio. We ain't had no beaches. We have Lake Erie. <laughs> which half the year you can't be in because it's like unsafe. <laughs> I don't know what it is like now, but if, if it's worsened, like a lot of our waters have been because of, you know, human misbehavior, mm -hmm. um, you, can't, you can't get in the water there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm learning, I'm working it out. <laughs> we get together. And, and you're there. I don't know if you said it, made the old brain. You're there in California for a reason. I am teaching at the University of California at Riverside. And the good news, come on, night, don't make me pull it out of you. And I'm, some, I'm trying to prepare a whole like thoughtful statement about it and everything. I, okay, I, all right, okay. Then. Okay, thank you. But, but yes, but you're there in California because you're teaching. That's one of the reasons why you're not with us. That's right, that's right. Full time. You asked, wait, what did you say? I cut you off. Uh, why, why I am not there full time. 
yeah. yeah full time, right, full time. And you asked Nyjah this, but because you shared all this caring, I thought maybe I should ask you this too. What inspires you? Because y'all are makers. And mm -hmm. here you are away from your regular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Space, outer space. I am, <laughs> I, I mean, I've been in that for a little bit, but really, honestly, like, thinking about um, our presences beyond this planet. And I think it's important, it, it's coming to me for a lot of reasons, but I think it's important like politically because as white billionaires are trying to find their ways to, to colonize yet another part of our universe, um, uh, BIPOC folk, our, you know, our trans and queer folk, like we, we actually are the people who need to be there, right? We are the folks who are carrying the, the gifts of the cosmos and our bodies, like our, our, our spiritual technologies are connected to the stars. So we actually are the ones who understand, I think, how to be in right relationship with, with the universe beyond this planet. So and you know, I'm not alone in it. There's Afrofuturists and, and other, all kinds of futurists that have been doing this work for decades. Um, so I think that now that there's a kind of technology that is caught up with us and the possibility of, of folks as citizens to travel to space, like that's gotta be a part of our mission in a different, in a different kind of way, even if it's just energetically from this planet. So the thing, yeah, so the thing, one of the things that's really inspiring me is 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 thinking about being with making work from the point of view of uh you know our ourselves as cosmic you said the word auntie um, um, right <laughs> and i'm kind of making a transit not transition but comparison <laughs> are you an auntie to makers Oh, yes. Yes. Um, I love that idea was like, I'm a kind of a baby auntie. I feel like that. Uh, it ha you know, I don't know when it happened. <laughs> like at, Hello? <laughs> like at some point, folks were like, well, you know, I'm reaching out for uh, mentorship support or other kinds. Of, and I'm just like, oh, no, this, oh, this is the place where I'm at. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, you get them here and there. I've been, you know, supporting other people. I also feel like that's a part, that's what you do. That's how I have grown up as an artist is having other artists um, help grow and teach me and continue. I mean, I'm still being brought up by artists, by other artists, right? So I get that that also is the, like, that's the practice. That's what we're supposed, that's what we're here for. But then like, there's a, a different kind of <laughs> thing that I feel like I'm in that I didn't know when it happened where folks are like, no, it's now, now you're in a place or whatever that means. I'm like, you, you're, this is what you do do now. And I'm like, oh shit. Okay. I'm working on like a, how what the practice of that is. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm trying to, I teach, right. So I'm, that's kind of an inherent part, but like actually being an auntie is right. It's a different kind of investment. Um, and I'm working to identify where it's really my place and 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 my work with folks because it's the people who um have said yes to me as like one of theirs that that was that's been investment in time and those folks I know were like okay you know I'm thinking of um and I I probably speak her name and, and any conversation I have about being an artist is Sharon Bridgeforth who saved my life as an artist but um, I, I'm pretty sure there was a moment of them just being like, okay, let me just help this child because <laughs> somebody got to, somebody has got to get them together. <laughs> so, uh, and, and Sharon had, did that beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, I'm recognizing the, that it's not, it's not a small action gesture at all. So I'm, I'm 
trying to do the work of being really mindful of where those yeses come from so that it's aligned and yeah in a good way you want to lift up some more of your your aunties yes some more of my aunties child we could be here all day who my who my my aunties um so i'm thinking of johnny coleman i was just talking johnny coleman is a uh installation sculptor who's the first to really teach me about materials and that materials live spirit lives in material um and um gosh carolyn jackson smith a theater artist um um adenike sharply um gosh dance and performance teachers um i will say capoeira as a as a spirit as a body um because there were i've had many teachers in capoeira but capoeira continues to be an altia mother to me um only yoshu and joni l jones writer theater artist performer mm, mm -hmm. yeah those are the the ones that are percolating I, some folks have been naming books too Mm. And I know you just named, you just said one, but yeah, go ahead, name them. Because uh, I'm just saying, Nyjah, we are in this auntie position. I'm older than you, so I remember it coming, but I, I appreciate the Mama Charmaine name, but it's, like you said, it's a lot to hold up, and we receive that, though. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> we can pray on this conversation a little later. Um, so I'm looking <laughs> <laughs> what am I reading right now that's lifting? I mean, anything Alexis Pauline Gums writes, of course. Um, uh, the Jazz of Physics has been an auntie. All of um, Audre Lorde's writing, um, an early, early auntie. Um, uh, Marlon Riggs's work, writings, all of it. Um, Joseph Beam and Essex Hemphill, that whole like circle of collaborators. Um, um, a new auntie. <laughs> they would not like that. It's that. I love that we're using this though. Um, Chanda uh, Prescott Weinstein, um, just fierce thinker, writer, scientist, mover person. Um, Fred Moten, of course. Um, yeah, those are, those are people I love. Yeah, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of the books. So it's hard because many of them are rushing to my, my brain simultaneously. Um, uh, Sun Ra, Douglas Ewart, kind of music aunties, Alice Coltrane, my goodness. I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, yes to that. Um, Odetta. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm, I love, I, I love jazz musicians and jazz music and creative musicians. So a lot of my, my aunties come out of, come out of that, um, legacy. Wait till you tell your niece or nephew, who was, who was, who gave you that name, niece, nephew? Uh, my niece, Laniqua. Uh-huh. <laughs> wait, wait till you tell Laniqua to listen to this episode. Laniqua? Thank you very much. We're going to use Unti from now on because it's a serious title. Ain't it something? I was like, okay. She is also, if I could tell like a short story about her, she has, this one has kind of read me her whole life. And I grew, she was born when I was, um, I think I was in middle school when she was born. And I was like, she is mine. I will take care of her. My sister, her mother was, was was young and was finishing high school. And I was like, whenever you need me to be with her, I will be with her. You finished high school. I mean, I was still in school too, but like, you know, there's something else about her wanting to finish this thing. Um, and I, you know, fell in love with this child. And um, when I came out, I told uh, her mom, partially because I knew if I told her, I wouldn't have to tell anybody else, right? She was gonna do the work for me and tell the rest of the family. <laughs> dearly. And I knew that, right? So I was like, it was, I think it was like Easter weekend. It was not the right time, but I was like, this is what I gotta say, what I gotta say. So 
I did that. I knew a bunch of family was going to be around. She was going to tell everybody. My niece, so, you know, there's, there's chatter. Folks are like, oh, what does that mean? What's going on? All of that. So I sit down with my niece. Um, I think it was just she and I in the house. She's sitting on the floor. I'm on the couch. I'm, I'm oiling her, greasing her scalp. And I'm like, so, you know, I get, I get serious. <laughs> I know there's been a lot of conversation. I'm trying to, you know, be a, be a teacher <laughs> and, and vulnerable and share. And um, like, so I know there's been a lot of conversation and just wanted to open up the space. And she starts shaking her head. And I'm like, oh, this is hard for her. And she just stops me. And she's just like, I don't understand why this is such a big deal. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> she was like, why is this such a big deal? She was like, there's a boy in my school. He's controversial too. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> her name, so her naming of things in my journey of coming out have been very grounding. So like thinking of queer as like controversy, but this like positive uh, catalyzing controversy and then my, you know, my my non-binary trans transition being like, oh, you're unkty. Okay, got it. It's like I'm just I'm gonna make sense of this for for everybody. And co she corrects folks when people are, you know, call me auntie. She's like, no, that's not that's not it. We're gonna do this differently. I just, you know, they give me hope. The children, they got it. The children. Wait, Adia, come back. Let's see if anybody's running behind Adia again. But the children, Adia. Forgot it. Nija said the children give you hope. Where, where are they now? Wait, wait, don't no, turn the, no, turn the camera to, to the there. turn the camera to the no, 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 not the secrets of what's happening on this side of the house. No, 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 no black dance stories. It's gonna be a different type of episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, we're gonna and, stay not we're gonna stay right here in this yellow room this one this yellow room camera this way they gonna come in for you in a minute anyway they Just will like but it the scene of the crime is this way so if i rotate it's no <laughs> it's, it's different it's a different black dad story it's a different so coco killingsworth it's not a quick, well, this is the part where I try to find questions in the chat, but they're having a whole thing going on in the chat, y'all. I hope they're watching and listening, but Coco writes, auntie squad in the chat. What kind of auntie are y'all? Or let's say auntie are y'all. Wait, for what kind of aunties are, wh who? I don't, I don't know if that's I a don't... question for the chat people or y'all people. But I think you answered that already, right? Yeah. I mean, in the crew, I'm the glue. In the crew of everybody, of my crew, I'm the glue. I'm the like, I'm like the like, I'm the set it offer. You know, there's the get it doneers, and I'm the like, hold up, wait a minute. This all gotta go. This is what we're doing. Like I'm the caller. You yeah. know, I'm like the glue that keeps people together, but then I'm then they take it. Like I don't have to do everything. Mm -hmm. Nigel, you know, and that looking at that, I, are you one of those? Definitely, yeah, definitely. I that also was the role I played growing up. Like if somebody was messing with a cousin, and work needed to be put in, it was like somebody call Nigel and, and come over. So it's 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 similar for sure now. Um, but I also. I don't, I don't know. I've been starting to get into to TikTok a little bit. And there are those, you know, TikToks about the, the older auntie without kids <laughs> and how they show up. Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's, that, that, did, that tends to be me. The auntie that like just shows up like ready. But we need y'all. We need y'all <laughs> so bad. Y'all keep us alive. We couldn't do any anything without the aunties that show up without kids. Like it gotta be and auntie without kids because otherwise everything is is falling apart like it's we y'all are so important to the eco the ecology of it all because right um you know you got to take you take the the little ones 
the even you know the older nibblings, all of them, just like okay, you need to you you're answering the phone. You sent they they send them over to to me. They're like you ain't got no kids, deal with them. Did you just say right. the older nibblings? Nibblings. Adia, Adia, did you hear that? <laughs> yes, it's Adrian Marie Brown. She be talking about the nibblings. Mm -hmm. Nibbling okay. Adrian Marie Brown. She be talking about the nibblings. Can you educate me yeah. just a little bit? So simple. It's a, a gender neutral way to talk about nieces and nephews. Because I went, I went the older ones that just take, I'm from one of nine. So I just went the ones that just take, and take nibbling. Oh, that, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> I love them dearly. I love all of them dearly. <laughs> Ava, y'all, Asante, well, hey, Ava, gave you, I think this was for Nyjah's land acknowledgement said it was, this was the most poetic land acknowledgement and self intro I have ever heard, ever. That's right. That wasn't a question, that was just a nice big up. And <laughs> wait, I'm gonna try to find it, but I can't find it now because I'm, I'm trying not to look in the chat, but Adia, somebody yes, gave you one of, an equally big compliment for going so far back and naming all those names and Nyjah also gave you that and you didn't go to ancestry.com clearly no it's the people it's what'd you say it's the people it's the people all right now okay. i'm gonna try but there are no questions in the chat and of course i will talk to y'all forever and ever amen let's talk a little bit about the culture in your dance and nija in your dance in your work in your work. And I started a little bit going there with Nija. And of course, Adia is working with, Adia has a piece for Dance Africa, which happens this weekend, but talking to the water. And Adia, Nija started talking about that. So let's talk to you, Adia, about culture in your dance. And then we'll come back to Nija. And then we, I forgot about the kombu kombucha. Culture, culture, culture in my dance. What like what do you mean like the cult the cultural root of the forms I present or like you talking about talking to some water stuff and some dirt and all the things? Yeah, and and the truth is, when we were talking earlier, and your son said, "Wait, I wrote it down. I'm talking to my dreams." Yeah, I mean that's that's oh my goodness, it really like you know I've said this since the day I started. Like I do not deserve to be hospitalized or incarcerated because I could have been a completely different person if it wasn't for this dance and this music and a drum. And, you know, San Francisco is, a, is not Oakland and I'm from Frisco. You know, we had bad hair care products. We didn't have no like Black Panthers telling us, you know what I'm saying, to free the land. We had like E-40, Too Short, Mac Mall, Messy Marv, Cool Nut, RBL Posse, you know what I'm saying? Rapping Fote. We had all these people talking to us, you know, about where we lived and what we were supposed to be doing. So, you know, I, I, you know, those are, you know, when I, when I was in grad school, you know, I, I was, you have to read the books, but I was also like, you know, E40 taught me ain't nothing come to a sleeper, but a dream. You feel me? Like I, you know, like I, you know, I'm as old as hip hop, you know, I was born the same year as the wit, you know what I'm saying? So all these things are a part of what kind of um, way I was approaching the learning when I started to study folklore, because I was, I was learning folklore at the time. You remember Video Soul? You remember Donnie Simpson and Video Soul, right? So we watched Video Soul after school. And then like, they had like, you, they used to have like hella videos. And then at a point they would only like, they started playing like 10 or 12 videos and I remember like they did it with peaches and cream they like peaches and cream that's right and then they would switch to the next song that that group was about to do and then they switched back to the first song so that's how I was like learning folklore right it's like I would be like okay we dancing and then the break would hit and I'd be like okay it's a break 
okay, let me go back. So I was like relating it to like watching videos after school. So when, that's why folklore was so fascinating to me because the connections between hip hop and traditional dance and drum music were very similar. And I could understand it through that, through that lens because I didn't know, I'd never been around like African dance clothes people, you know, I never been around that. So I had bad manners. I was eating all the food first before we prayed. Like I was doing all the bad stuff, right? I was just like scrapping from Frisco, you know? So um, in terms of culture, like it really just taught me how to, you know, it gave me some basics of African culture and act right. And, you know, act right. pop taught me how to learn folk folklore, you know? Um, and it's brought me all around the world. Like, you know, it sent me to Haiti, it sent me to Cuba, it sent me, it sent me all these different places that I never thought I would go. So, you know, that's yeah, what the thanks. culture is. Thank you. How about you, Nija? And we don't go too far away from community when we need answers too. That's right, that's right. Come through. There's so, I have some similar intersections. Like the culture has been, I think about like, I was in, dance teams and crews on on my block when I was, I don't know, probably in elementary school, right? So we would listen to Fly Girl and go and make, go and make dances and and, and battle, you know, the house around the corner. <laughs> so that, that is it for me is like listening and being, you know, I talked about being from Ohio where we get both uh, like East Coast energy, hip hop, um some southern so there's this like mixture of of of, of hip-hop in ohio at least at that time and i think it's, it's probably still very similar where it's a, like it's kind of behind but then also becomes this whole other thing because it's a really it's a southern northern city um so that that energy is for sure in that aspect of like the culture is in my work um and i think the the idea of like being like in the moment and not in, in out of the moment in the time and out of the time is a reflection of that is that it's like it's present but it's also of the past simultaneously like in within a short span of time but like that concept of being being present and past simultaneously is, is a thing that feels a part of that and like remix culture. I, I sometimes talk about that like as a as an aesthetic for me of just like it's it's hearing what's present and what has been and like finding an un, another way to understand that and like that as like as ba as really fundamental hip hop language has been a big piece of like what culture looks like for me and or how to make that a, a kind of practice. But that also feels very 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 sp spiritual, right? Or at least a way of working with ritual that allows what is capital R ritual to be in the spaces for which that is appropriate. Um, because I, in my, in my art, I'm not all the time trying to do that. Like it's, I'm not taking capital R ritual and making that and, and staging that. Like I have, I've got my, I've got issues with, with, with that or feeling like there needs to be a time and a place. So the idea of kind of, of remixing, finding, finding the language, finding the now of these things that are so ancient that they are future is, is a part of, of like how I find the fabric of that or where, what makes up the fabric of practice for me. Um, and I, I don't know, I was brought up by like, no nonsense black women, um, <laughs> you know, that were that were seriously like no, no nonsense mm -hmm. about, about everything. My mother was largely pretty conservative. Um, my aunts were, you know, my, my, and to the point of like my, my having an aunt that was like, I don't know, Nigel, you talk too much. You ain't gonna never have a man. And I was like, oh, little does you know, that's not a problem for me, but like a part of what, like the conversation. <laughs> He was trying to have with me is just like, oh my God, child, we gotta help you to like to be okay in this world because because you talk too much. Like you have you have too much to say, quiet down. But like so that idea of like having a thing to both charge you, to support and charge you, but also to push back against feels like kind of like the culture in it because it's like totally um loving 
uh, these women that were trying to protect me, right? Protect me from, from a lot of things. And then also we're saying, you know, do, do different, do better, do more than we were able to. But child, let me make sure that you live through the 80s, you know, I want you to live through the 80s and the 90s. Um, that was, was, was killing us. Um, you know, I lived across the street for many years from a, from a crack house. Um, so the, like the, and I say that it was like, not like, oh, what is the woes me black story? But in terms of like, in terms of culture, like it's, it's also that um, kind of grit and ability to make do and make good out of, out of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, is a part of, for me, of, of, of what, how that, sh I think that shows up in the work, certainly work ethic for me. You know, there's this thing about us, and I'm not a maker, but when I think about both of you and the work that you make, the works that you make, and how it's, as you, you use the word remixing, and I, I know both of you do the remix, but the ritual is so pertinent. Mm -hmm. And do you get pushback when you try to remix from the contemporaries, the young, young, young ones, or vice versa, the folks who are traditional ritual, and they say, oh, no, no, you can't do that in the, so from both ends of the world. You go first, Adia. Yeah, you get pushed back, of course, you know? Yeah, because you know, I'm, I, I pride myself on being a gray area, right? I'm not African enough for the Africans. I'm not American, I'm not black enough for the black American. I'm never, I'm never what the thing that is required for Africa school, right? So I'm like this gray area, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just in this, in this strange place where it's like this contemporary and traditional self. So the traditionalists say that I'm not traditional enough, but I mean, I can go and do the traditional dance and it's fun. And I enjoy being a dancer for other people that like, if that's their mission statement. And then like the contemporary ones are like, oh, that's African because it has a beat and I tell stories. So my thing is like, change is a part of tradition. Like gray areas make everything funky. Like, so, you know, I don't really know what to do for them. It used to really bother me when I was younger, like people's critiques of me, but then I got older and I said, you know what? I have to live my life in this body, right? And people have always, since I was a small child, they approach me with everything that they think that I am, always. They're like, oh, so you one of these, 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 these. They always step to me like that. And at a point I said, okay, so that's, that's, that's how you, that's what you're doing. But that doesn't mean that that's what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody, they always step to me like, oh, you're a deal? Like if they haven't seen me, they're like, oh, I didn't think he was going to look like that. Oh, I didn't think he was going to sound like that. Oh, you, oh, you you think you black. Like, oh, like, you know, like they, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people bring that to me. And because people have told me, no, I couldn't. They, they, you know, and then there's also the thing of like, you, you have, you have, like I'm an African that has ancestors too, right? And sometimes the altar isn't a table with things on it. Sometimes you're the altar. Sometimes you're the candles. Sometimes you are the cloth. Sometimes you are the prayers, right? And so when you have people like me that have crowned myself, right? Because my ancestor said so, right? It becomes problematic for traditionalists that believe that you need to be crowned in a certain kind of way. I've crowned myself because I had to, to stay alive and to stay healthy and to stay here because I could not be here, right? And close, right? Not be here. So my thing is, yes, change is a part of tradition. Like mm -hmm. that's what it is. And so if you're not moving with tradition that has change in it, then you're not moving with tradition. What Adia said, like <laughs> exclamation, <laughs> stars. I, you know, I, I tease, but mean this, uh, that when your age begins with an F, the universe is giving you permission to give none. 
I there is pushback, but I, that can't be my business. You know, I've had elders in um, the traditions that I practice and, and multiple traditions that have all said, Nyjah, it's time and it's been time. I just got to I got to do my work. I believe that. Yes, to crowning self, I'm in right relationship with with my ancestors, and I know I listen to them, um, and I'm 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 here to be obedient to that. So I'm I'm not interested in um, trying to to perform that in any particular way for anybody. And I think folks who who see who see my my work can see the the integrity of that. And if they don't, that you know that's I, that's not my, it's not for them and that's okay. Um, and I don't necessarily see, I don't get too much pushback from folks and maybe I'm not looking for it. I find myself not really trying to check for that. Um, but I also am so interested in how, how the things get differently, how they can get moved, how they, and as, you know, as Adia was just saying, that's why I'm like, yes, exclamation mark of that. If the, if the thing is stagnant, then it's, it actually, it can't be culture. Like what, what, what Africa are we talking about when we say that? What Cuba are we talking about when folks say that? Like what capital T, lowercase t tradition are folks talking about when they say that? Um, as long for me as I know that I'm in practicing integrity in the traditions that I'm following That's right. um, with the elders who are uplifting me and saying yes, then the rest of it can't be my business. And if that if it's misunderstood, misinterpreted, it's unfortunate, but it, it can't be where my, my where my focus is. Um, and spirit is clear with me. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and follow that. And I've, there are human collaborators on this plane um, that I have that are in conversation with me and with spirit that are the folks that spirit have called on to, to support me in, in the work I'm here to do. And those are the folks that I've got to, to spend my time with. The rest of it, it, it you know, I can't, I can't do that. It can't occupy too much of my consciousness. Come on, spirit. That's right. That's right. Because we're walking in our priesthoods. You know what I'm saying? Nyjah and I are walking in our priesthoods. And anything that is going to pull us away from our priesthood, our service to spirit, our service to our ancestors, our service to our people is not to be, not for us to, that's not ours. That's not for us to deal with. You right. know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. There's a compliment in here, but I just want to say one more time what Nyjah said. If the thing is stagnant, that it can't be culture. Okay, so there's a compliment from Stephanie Battenblatt. Hey, Stephanie, some folks joined late. Hey, Stephanie. Stephanie says that critique is the compliment hidden in their fear of watching you live with power. Oh. Wow. Side eye. Yeah. <laughs> like big up to tradition though, like it, it provides us with an anchor, right? So we don't just float away into the cosmos of the talking to the dreams because we can, right? It gives us an anchor, but it doesn't need to like drown us. That's right. I better We're drop these quotes. Of years, right? Like the folks that are here now doing what we are calling tradition, we are so far moved from whatever kind of origin folks are conceiving right like so so it it's it actually isn't that it is and it is right so it is just as much the tradition that folks are claiming as as true and unmovable as it is of the tradition that we are moving with they have to they have to both coexist in order for us to continue to to live right we're not we, we that i think that is also a part of the, the spirit of these traditions we're talking about is that they've always been speaking back and forth in time goosebumps clearly all the spirits are here with us and and we have time it's over y'all <laughs> wrap it up as they say <laughs> wow oh, it's not over it's, it's not it's over it's over. not over there's more there's more but we say thank you to you too but is there anything thank you so coming much. up are there is there anything coming up let me start there that we should know about? But I gotta look at Dance you. Africa. <laughs> Dance Africa 2021. I gotta say that. Um, 
So what is Saturday, Mama Sherman? Yes. It's Saturday, the 29th. Yes, it's Saturday, the 29th. Dance Africa 2021. It's mm -hmm. virtual. There's a dance, we did dance films with phenomenal choreographers. F Fritz, Portia, Defel, me, we just went in. I don't know. So you should, it's eight o'clock, it's eight o'clock. Seven so o'clock. It's at seven o'clock. Bam.org to get your ticket. Give it. <laughs> Sorry, Coco. I love you, Coco. Sorry, Coco. <laughs> Coco, you heard that, right? Mm. Nija, anything coming up? Uh, I'm doing the bedtime stories with Juma Tatsu Po on, I'm looking at wow. seven. Other than that, I'm trying to have my, my black ass in the studio. And <laughs> if I'm obedient, I ain't doing shit but that for the next month. I'm, dropping, <laughs> I'm cussing. I need to drink and eat. Um, but <laughs> in July, I'll be uh, coming coming that way for a good few weeks, but starting back in this um, ceremony work for BIPOC trans folks that have been killed. So I'm doing a few rituals in, in New York. So one in Buffalo and uh, two in Harlem and um, the Bronx. So that's coming up in July and there'll be postings about it. Thank you. Yes, post things about it. And we will too, just let Black Band Stories know any names that you all want to lift up? We've lifted up a couple, but any names? Charmaine Warren. <laughs> Charmaine Warren. Mama Charmaine Warren. There's so many names. Like, wh which name? Ifea, Ifadayo, Ola Berenjo, Michaela Sampson. Kwame Azalius Ross. Kwame Azalius Ross. Um, Chadwick Bozeman. Mums the Schemer, Demia <laughs> Vernice Thompson. Oh, you, you're gonna keep going for a minute, right? Cause there's, there's too many. Zeke Neely, there's so many right now. Kibibi Dillon, there's so many. There's so many. Well, let's reach out to the spirits and lift them up and we lift ourselves up. Thank you all, yes, yes. Such a blessing, y'all. Such a blessing. Spirits are working today. Well, oh. I'm a turn. Always. Uh, thank you, Makita. Always working. Always. Yes, <laughs> indeed. I'm going to turn it to you, Maki, for a minute. Hey, thank you. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here with us tonight. Um, a reminder to like and comment on this video. It helps us to just, sorry, <laughs> to reach out and to, to dance have this video shown. <laughs> I told you, spirit. <laughs> spirit, have this video shared and shown to those who need to be, to see it. So like and, com and comment on this video to help us out with that. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share with your community and follow us on our social media. We're just gonna grow, grow, grow this beautiful community. Also a huge thanks to our co-presenting partner, 651 Arts for helping us to make Black Dance Stories continue to happen. You can check out all the wonderful things that they're doing on their social media. Their Instagram is at 651 Arts. So next week, our um, it kicks off our June lineup featuring IABD founders and iconic presenters, which include Colleen Jennings Roggensack, and Cleo Parker Robinson, Laura Greer and Ann Williams, Danny G and Debbie Blunden Diggs, Mickey Shepard and Joan Myers Brown. So keep a lookout for the schedule, um, dates on our social media and save your Thursday evening. We'll see you next week. Yes, and thank you again for joining us family. Go on out there, be active. Be, what, what do I usually say? Get, in Get some... into some good trouble. I can't believe I forgot that. Okay, one more time. Go on out there and get into some good trouble. Woo! Yes. Woo!